Hi, Jeremy. Hi there. How you doing? Pretty good, you? Oh, man. So you have installed your monitors up high. Is that good? Um, I've got. Um, <clears throat> I've got two monitors. Oh, so I've got one monitor split into two halves. Um, yeah, I'm always curious where your monitors are because you look up all the time. Oh, you have two stacked, is it? It's one monitor, but it's in P by P mode, so it's treated. Oh, monitors. okay, that makes sense. Yeah, I have a tall monitor, a wide monitor as well. Maybe you can do that. Yeah, so this one's specifically designed for what they call P by P or picture by picture mode. Oh, it's designed, okay. Um, so I've got it plugged in to the computer with two cables. So the computer thinks there's two monitors connected. So I could move oh. you guys down to the bottom. Okay, and now I'm looking down at you. <laughs> <laughs> That's more like it. But now it's in the way of where I want to type APL, APL. So, yeah, and probably. it's also that's the screen. So I share this. I share the bottom screen. Um, screen sharing. So I put you mm -hmm. guys on the top screen. Okay, now I know. Hi, Rory. Welcome. Are you able to talk or be videoed, or are you just on text chat today? Just text chat, I guess. <laughs> That's what I am. Okay, no worries. I don't want you to disturb people. All right. Well, since today is a extra rather late announced extra um, session. It might just be the four of us, so. Cool. That's fine. How are you, Isaac? I'm doing good. Great. Yeah, I wasn't sure I was gonna be able to make it today, but I was able to wrap things up. So I'm happy we're doing an extra one today. Yeah, thanks for coming. Thanks for hosting. This is uh, always fun. Um, all right, share my screen. Right. We haven't done this big O diuresis before, or have we? Did we we have already in operators? Yeah, we did. We did. Okay, that's terrible because I forgot. Um, in that case, I will add a explanation of something I just played with. Okay, here we are, circle diuresis, dyadic. That's a rank thing. Of, oh, well, there are two versions of it, one with a big O and one with a small O. Yeah, this is the big one, the circle as opposed to jot. So, um, uh, so circle diuresis, I don't think we've done the dyadic form of the function that it creates. Oh, maybe. Mm. 
Oh, yes, we have. Here it is here. Yeah, that's line one. This so this one. is. It's one over to the score. Oh, two to the one third, right? Okay. So this one is increasing with both arguments. That doesn't seem quite correct then. Um, so the reason I'm asking is I was trying to do the permutations function, um, which is, so if I wanted to do P 10 comma four, that would be, um, that would be that. I just write six. So that is um, mm -hmm. um, lamp, lamp, lamp. What's lamp? Comma. Uh, comma. What's the mnemonic then for the lamp? Um, you know, actually, uh, Adam posted, it looks pretty helpful, um, a link to a bunch of mnemonics on um, Yeah, the forum. Adam pointed out. So Adam replied to the session 14 with answers to pretty much everything, one of which is basically, Jeremy, stop forgetting things. Look up the mnemonics with a link to the, yep. which is exactly right, with a link to the page. Um, yeah, so this will be bottom row keys. Similar to the words comma and comment. Okay. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Comma slash comment. Right. Um, I've been so, doing the, the, the Anki every day and that's been helping quite a bit. Yeah, I haven't been doing any extra study at all because I've been doing the NB dev stuff. So my APL is four hours a week for this, plus a bit of stuff with my daughter and her friend. So it's not really enough to remember. Yeah. Okay, so REC1507 reckons that this would do it. Okay, it does. So that's interesting. Oh yeah, I do see it. This is what it's doing. It's doing reciprocal of two to the power of reciprocal of three. Mm. So this is called over. Okay, so um, that's awesome. I knew there'd be something. I just didn't have time to quite figure it out properly. So an interesting exercise for the reader would be to create a version of this facet program that does the 10 minus six part as well because the definition is actually, actually we could write it out here, is really that, right? Um, mm. Sorry. Well. Okay, that's a useful review. So then another useful review 
which I'm not going to do now, is well, A, uh, Adam quoted out upper and lower tack with higher rank arguments and explained why and how that works in a way which somebody probably should put on the APL wiki if you anybody feels up to it. Um, it looks really great. And also talked a bit about, um, oh yeah, this train that we had trouble with, which honestly the thing he ended up coming up with is really no better than the defun anyway, which is fine, but it's still a useful exercise. And he said he's uh, proposing an operator that actually does pre-process the left-hand side rather than the right-hand side, which would be nice, which he's calling B, for example. And that would do exactly what we wanted. That would be a nifty operator because, yeah, without it, it's quite ugly. Hmm. And yeah, also some discussion about the Booleans, which the most interesting part being the point that you can think of and as just being times, and you can think of not as just being one minus, which I, I do all the time outside of APL. And if you do that, then all of the other things come out quite naturally. Although I didn't know they're called De Morgan's laws. There you go. Hmm. Okay. So. And I was not smart enough to paste in a list of the things we're covering. So let's do that. Is it in here somewhere? Yes. Okay, so we've done exclamation mark. We've done the tax. We've done less than and greater than. We've done these. We've done this. Yep. We've done this, right? Yeah, we've done that. These we haven't. And this is no. just Josh, isn't it? Or is that diamond? Can't quite tell. Yeah, it's diamond. We've done that. Did we do diamond? Um, I thought so. It's just a statement separator. Um, I think we've talked about it. I don't. I don't remember us putting it in a notebook anywhere. Okay. Um, where did we discuss how to create functions? Was that in the first one? Under that, and there we go, functions. Oh, well, we should put it here then. Okay, so anybody know how to type the diamond? Um, I think it's uh, you hit the back tick a few times, two or three times or something, if I remember right. You're right, double back tick. Oops. That's no good. Broken help. Nope. No, you gotta search for what it the name of what it does. Uh-huh. Which is it doesn't even show up in my toolbar. Does it for you? It looks like a very small dot if you don't have a great font. Hmm. Oh. Oh, you guys search for statement separator. You found it? 
Uh, I'm searching for a statement separator in APL wiki now. Um, there's a page on it in the dialog doc. I don't see it in the wiki yet. Okay. Um, what should I search for? Um, it's called under, it's in the link here. Okay. The different section, it is a defined function section. Yeah, I found that it's in trad funds though, which seems like a weird place for it. You can't find in the APL wiki. Because it's not just used in trad funds, but okay, maybe that's just where they happen to put it. All right, fine. We know what it is anyway. Oh, know. I see. Serata said we actually haven't done slope bar because it's a placeholder. Got it. That's easy to fix too. Uh, okay. Okay, so we could say F is equal to two things. First, we're going to calculate A as that, and then a new statement, and then we're going to return two plus A. There we go. Make sense? Like a mm. semicolon, really. Oh, so it's always the statement on the right side that gets returned? The last thing that it evaluates yeah. is returned. Yeah. There are some like wrinkles, like there's something called guard expressions, which you can look up in the help. Um, but yeah, basically, it's like, you know, a lot of languages do this thing. There isn't exactly a return. Mm. Right, Swift does that. Rory Kemp says it's not the last thing, it's the first thing. I don't think that's right. We're returning the last thing. We're returning 2 plus A. A equals 4 times 2, and then we do 2 plus A, and then that's what we return. Okay, so Rory's got one to try, which is slightly different to what we just discussed. Oops. And copy it properly. Uh, is that going to work at all? Okay, that's interesting. So these are different for some reason. Here we expected three words. Right. So in this case, it's definitely returning two plus. Four. It's the first non assignment or Rory put something that. Oh, the first non assignment or something like that. Um, right. So, yeah, okay. First non assignment. Fine. Hmm. Thanks, Rory. Um, lamp is a comment, which is like a comma. And then um, better do slope bar.
I see. So we haven't quite got it all right here. So. And this is probably wrong too. Yeah, it's called scan. So we've got to fix this. Scan. Okay. And I guess this is then scan first. Okay. So that's all good. Next. Um, I think I want to do these ones. They seem to come mm -hmm. up a lot. Those I believe are back tick uh, pound and back tick dollar sign. So I'm having some trouble hearing you, um, Isaac. Say again. Uh, the the I guess the, I was going to tell you the short keys for those are back tick pound and back tick dollar sign. Oh, pound. I can't get over the fact you Americans call that character Pound. It's the weirdest thing in the world, but I know what you mean. What do you call it? I would call it Sharp or Optothorpe or Hash. Pound is a pound sterling English currency character to my mind. <laughs> gotcha. But, you know, after spending 10 years in America, I can, you know, come to terms with the fact that you guys are all crazy. It's fine. Yeah, I wish I could argue with that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't know. The last three or four years, I just I got nothing. <laughs> no, no comeback for that. You've got too much for us. I'm sorry. <laughs> There's plenty of nice things about it, though. Okay. You've seen nothing yet. I love that it's called grade down and dyadic grade down. That's pretty straightforward to remember. Okay. And the character's called grade down. Oh, okay. Great down glyph. Okay. Does anybody know what the hell this does? We'll give you the index locations that would put that list in order, that array in oh, order. Okay. Got it. So the weird thing is that they don't actually bother to do the sorting. So uh, what's the character, if you, is it slash to get the, to actually do the sorting, to get these indexes? I think what's normally done is if you put your array into a variable, then mm -hmm. you can just index into your array with the sort thing. Yeah, but how do you index into an array? What's the character for that? So uh, you can do it with brackets or the oh, squash squad, brackets? Squad, I believe, yeah. I thought there's some glyph or op arrow. You can... Op arrow does it because it creates a major axis. Sorry, what does it? Op arrow. I forget what it's called here. Take. Um, right, that one. So yeah, that there's will... the. 
So up arrow, right, under, on, okay. And then there's also the, the squash quad, which are the quad squad. Uh, okay. So here's um, one way to do it. Used. So, oh, it's actually doing it in reverse order. Okay. And you're saying another way to do it would be with up arrow. On the left, no, on the other side of A. Uh -huh. So it will be up arrow. Right, that will create, no, up arrow A will create a column vector. And then we can apply sort grade to it. I think I need to run that boxing thing. A pair array a can I go on? Right. That should create a column vector array. Doesn't seem now to. Now we have oh. Why doesn't it? How do we create a column vector? Um oh man. I need to revise. I know we've done it. I've forgotten. Isaac, did you have another way of doing it? I think you were saying something. Um, I thought I did, but uh, so Rory put in the chat. There's a way to use. Um, I guess I'm calling it the squash quad, but I don't know if that's what it's actually called. Um, so you've got two sort idioms. One of which was the brackets. Um, but then there's a second way. Um. Oh, a there. little, a little square, a little. Uh, yes, here it's this one. Okay, well that uses well. Materialize. L. Materialize. Okay, well let's learn this as well now then. Whoops. Um, interestingly, and this threw me off for a while, is there's actually. Um, I'm going to copy and paste Rory's comment into the notebook while we're here too. But I think um, back tick L and back tick capital L are slightly different. One does the indexing and one does the printing of the screen. Okay. Um, even though they look almost the same. Okay. It's called a squad, not a quad. Squad means materialize. If it's an array, returns it. Otherwise, you don't what we've been using or to print stuff or a dot to the... collection. Okay, so it converts a object oriented thing. It's basically the same as doing list parentheses in um, Python. You know, taking with a, with an iterator. It's it's bit, and that's what, exactly what we call it in Python. I guess we'd say we're materializing the iterator. Um, gives you the items of that. Um, all right, so maybe let's do it after these. Okay. Um, Squad. Non attic. Squad. Materialize. Dyadic. Squad. Index, which is exactly what we want. I assume. Got 
God knows how we're going to explain materialize. Let's see what they do. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, this is a nice example, though. Working with um, Excel. So the work, works, workbook, work sheets. Okay, so sheets is an object of this class, but squad is gives you the items in the sheets. Okay, so I'm just going to paste it. Okay, so the one we care about is index. So we've got a matrix. Okay, so two, three gives you row two, column three. All right. Mm, it's just indexing, right? Yeah. And then it's a matter of two and three. it looks like if you enclose it, we will get multiple ones. Okay, so Oops, row. Row. Okay. Um, Okay, that's what I was expecting. So then if we enclose, no, damn it, <laughs> enclose. Uh, Z. V? Uh, Z. Z. Oh, okay, I was close. Okay, ZXCV are the um, shoes. No, it's not that. Hmm. Oh, inside the parens. Wait, what? Really? Why? Um, oh, oh, that's a uh, quite yeah precedence. So yeah. that was the close was happening. Yeah, right, 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 right. Of course, everybody knows that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe this would be easier if I multiplied this by two, so we can see it's not just returning whatever I pass it. Okay. 
<laughs> Great. So now we know the answer to our question. Did it work correctly when you multiplied by two? As expected, um, it returned three and five. Oh, I uh, redefined the. Find it because I'm silly. Oh. There we go. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, okay, so now we can do this, and we know we can index into a with the enclosed grade down of a. Um, and I've done that wrong. Oh, I forgot the squad. <clears throat> and close grade down and then use that to index into A. And now how do we do that with a neat tacit thing? Rory's version is a defund. This might be another of those cases where you kind of want the reverse order. Um, so that's the defund, which is fine. <coughs> so you want to pre process with that. And then on the left hand side, yeah. So if we did the, um, okay, so if we did it the other way around, A and then the tilde diuresis, mm. and then we shouldn't need the parentheses. Okay. And so, Actually oh, now you can do another to the diarsis and get rid of A on the left if you put parentheses around the whole thing. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be quite that easy because as soon as, well. Because if you, if to the diarsis doesn't have a left hand side, it will put one for you. Yeah, but I don't think it's the same because when you do this because of precedence, this is now a train that's treated in a different way. So we've actually got to be careful to put some uh, jots in here, oh, which is what Rory just said as well. Um, so what we want to do is we want to do, um, first we do that, then we do enclose. Is this the right way around though? It is, there oh. you go. Okay, which is definitely less, less nice. So we could say like sort is that, and then we could say sort A. Look mm. at us, so fancy. That's really fancy, for real. Oh, Rory's got a better one. Oh my God, you don't need the parentheses. Well, I think that's interesting. Let's get rid of them. So I really want to learn how to parse these things, but I just, I just don't have a sense of how to parse them. But that's something we might talk about on the forum is how on earth do you know how this is parsed? Rory, if you know a link to anything that kind of defines reasonably in some detail what these parsing rules are, that we could read them to understand why this works, that would be interesting. Okay, so Rory's got a nicer train here, which I will call train sort.
So this is, okay, so this is the right hand side. Okay, so this is function, function, function. So this is a fork. So this first applies to both arguments. This is applied to both arguments. So this is just the right hand side. This is omega. This is, um, oh, now in a, oh, no, in a jot, this whole thing is done monadically. So this is squad applied to, oh, this is just squad applied to the pre-processed. -pro, pre so this is uh, omega and grade down omega. Um, and then, oh, I guess this all goes first actually because the operator happens first. So that's gonna be the same as this, I believe. Yes. Are you convinced why the, um same is needed what does that do yeah so okay so this is a fork a fork is a list of three verbs mm -hmm. um an operator returns a verb so we've got function operator function so this is the dyadic version of the operator there is only dyadic of this operator it returns a function therefore this is a function and mm. it's a function which in uh which um um and closes and then grades right i get that um so it's kind of backwards to when we don't use jot uh oh he's saying grades and then encloses oh yeah yeah grades and then encloses so it's the same as not with jot okay grades and then encloses so we go right to left right that's easier to read cool good Okay, I like that. Okay, so there's a function. So function, function, function. So when you have F, G, H, that's the same as, you know, being applied to alpha and omega. That's the same as, do they kind of write it like this in, I think that's what they do in APL. Uh, informally at least that's the same as uh, no, alpha mm. f omega g alpha h omega so we have uh, so <clears throat> um n close jot grade down is f so we have f squad um same hmm. well i mean dyadically it's actually right hand side so f squad oh, right -hand side. So we'll so we're, gonna get, we're gonna get f applied to oh and we're calling it monadically so we just have this okay so we've got um, grade down, then enclose of omega, of A, squad, mm -hmm. identity, A. H of omega is omega in this case, right? Huh? H of omega is omega in this case because yes, of same. Exactly. exactly. Let's see. Cool. It's going to take a Thank while you. for this to become intuitive, but it's all good. Um, okay, and then you can do it with axes as well, but we're just learning all the glyphs, so we don't need to do that because it's not a new glyph. Hmm. So hopefully, is there a way to sync the contents? Nope, apparently not. It's not very useful. Never mind. If I say grade up, I think it'll do it. All right. So presumably this is exactly the same thing, but it's going to effectively sort it. Oh, and yeah. wait, did we do the dyadic? 
No. We have not yet, no. Oopsie daisy. Well, I guess while we're here, let's do my edit grade up. Okay, I think that's enough for that one. Okay. Provides collating sequence, collating sequence for character data. A N grade down banana. Maybe API wiki. Oh, okay, collation order. I see what they're saying. So I think they're saying order it in a way where A always comes before N. Or vice versa, so grade down. Um, so if we said like this, so if I, uh, so this is saying the first element is a capital B, is that right? And then the second element is an N, and then an A, and then A, oh, sorry, um, capital B, N, N, A, A, A. So capital B doesn't guess appear we index here, so it's not going to resort. Um, yeah, that makes sense. So it's saying, um, and remember this is sorting in reverse, right? So because, so, so it's saying this is the order in which I want the letters to appear. So let's try to come up with maybe a better example. Um, like A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Okay. Um, um, so I want to sort C first, and then uh, then G, and then F, and then everything else. So um, to sort that, then I say. Um, a bracket B. A bracket B. 
For some reason, I'm a bit offended by the bracket thing. I kind of like the squad thing, but <laughs> okay, um, fair enough. Okay, so now it has, and this is in reverse order. So it's got the C's last, then the G's, then the F's, and then everything else is not being moved at all. Um, so just for my own practice. Um, I want B sorted into or sorted. Uh, B is the sort order for uh, A. So I could just say A, is that right? A sort by G. E. You have to enclose it. Okay. Oh, which one needs to be enclosed again? Uh, the enclosure the is. No, back on 47, we don't enclose. No, we do enclose it. Okay, that's that's right. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, squad expects an enclosed argument on the left, or squad into, if you want to call it that, would be on the right. Um, okay, cool. So our well, the other way we could just do it would is be on the just, right, um, right? Uh, let's just do it here. Sorry, uh, squad. Um, okay, enclose, which is a shoe, which is this one. Should it be the other way? Should it? I think so. Okay. So A is the thing we're indexing indexed by enclosed B. Cool. So the examples they give in the docs, uh, or is it the APL wiki? And the APL wiki are good because they're using quad, things like quad A and that contains the alphabet. So that's saying do it in, alphab in, the, in alphabetical order. And we haven't done this yet, but I know it means mirror, flip, rotate, whatever. So this is A backwards. So this would be reverse alphabetical order. Okay. Cool. Um. Great. Let's do these, shall we?
Um, okay. I think broadly speaking, we call these rotates and transpose. Okay. This is called is percent. Oh, that's nice. It's next to it on the keyboard. I think all three of those are going to be the percent, the up carrot, and the ampersand. So five, okay, six, that's, and that's handy. seven. Very handy. All right. Um, where do we define our matrix? Up here somewhere. There we are. All right. Not much to talk about this one as far as I can see. Dyadic. I see, rotate. Makes sense. Okay, so this is just taking, so it might be easier if we do one at a time. So this will take the first element from the front and put it on the back. So it's rotating them. It's like, if you imagine that they're in a circle, it's rotating them around one. That's gonna be doing by three. This is going in the opposite direction, taking stuff off the end and putting it at the front. This is doing it for each row. And this is doing it by a different amount for each row. Oh, gotcha. I really wish they used broadcasting in APL with the same rules as NumPy. But it makes stuff like this so much, you know, more consistent. Um, it did broadcast in 82, no? Uh, what's that? In 82, it did broadcast. In 82, a, did you say? Right, 82, line 82 in your script. Oh, it, well, um, it broadcasts, um, it always broadcasts scalars to rank anything arrays. But... Correct. Um, it doesn't in any very general way broadcast vectors to uh, matrices, for example. So for example, I don't believe you can do this. No, you're right. You know, so, so it's like it's really inconsistent, whereas in NumPy, there's a set of rules and they're also super flexible in terms of like how they work and any, 
any combination of ranks and you can permute, transpose, or add unit axes to get it to do exactly what you want. Or else in APL, it's some of them mm -hmm. kind of behave like this case, it's it's kind of doing it, broadcasting each element of the left to the, each row on the right. Mm -hmm. um, so three, it has to be the right, the left hand side has to be three numbers. Yeah, and it just depends like this, it works for this particular glyph, but not all glyphs. Like the fact that that doesn't work for plus, I just, I don't understand why they do it that way. Mm. Um, so the NumPy broadcasting rules, like there's only three of them and they're just fantastically flexible. Um, and they also work in PyTorch and they also work in TensorFlow. Etc. Probably chance. Yeah. Kupai. All right. Um, so that one. Yeah, maybe I'm missing something. I don't know. Um, rotate. I think it's um I think in both cases, I think it's it's not really doing broadcasting. I think it's just applying the function or it seems right. like it's applying the the function I mean, maybe. right. It's a special case of a function with a left hand side which is rank one and a right hand side that's rank two. You know, it behaves like broadcasting in this special case, exactly. Rory isn't objecting, so you're probably right. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, okay, so then there's the one that goes the other direction. Which I guess is carrot. Nope, probably ampersand. Yep. Presumably this is, yeah, just the first version. It's like the bar version. Okay, circle bar. Mind you, it was 1 a.m. for Rory. He might want to sleep. Circle bar. He says he doesn't like NumPy's broadcasting <laughs> and new access and stuff. He likes rank, but doesn't know enough about him to make a reasonable argument. Fair enough. Yeah. My argument basically is that should work. And the fact that it doesn't seems like a missed opportunity. Or alternatively, that should work. Like, well, you know, it should pick an axis by default and just do it. You can do it with rank, but it just seems like totally unnecessary to force you to have a rank when you don't need one. Okay, monadic circle bar. By the way, Rory, you don't need new access. You can just use none, which makes it a bit um, less wordy. Reverse first. So it's only gonna make a difference in the matrix case. The thing is, I mean, NumPy and stuff, they don't have anything like insert or reduce or whatever, or whatever you want to call slope and stuff. So like there's a huge missed opportunity there, which is reductions in NumPy are not very flexible. Um, and there isn't a rank operator. So like the things where you want that, it's missing. I want something with both. I want broadcasting insert slash reduce and rank operator. I think I want APL, but with this kind of like, the rank operator should 
not be required in situations where NumPy's broadcasting rules could work. I think that's what I want. Um, okay. NumPy has reduced, no? I mean, uh, I just Googled it. I didn't know what the function Well, it is. has a reduce, right. Oh. But it's... Um, um, not nearly like it's it's not as nearly as rich as reduce with a rank mm. operator, you know. Um, so yeah, it does apply a U funk U funk along an axis. Right. Um, so that's I mean that's cool. Um, One thing I'm not sure about is the performance stuff around reduce, how well that works. But I think mm. it's a lot less rich than, you know, scan and all that stuff with rank. Right. Okay. Um, that's the same. Yeah, that's what we'd expect. Okay. So I think the next one presumably is going to be transposed based on how it's spelt or how it looks. This is carrot. Called circle backslash. And it is just transpose. And there was a whole Arraycast episode about transpose, um, which Rory's getting excited about in the chat because there's dyadic transpose. Although I'm not sure we're going to get quite as excited about it as Connor did because we're all very used to it because it's pronounced per mute in PyTorch and we're very familiar with it. So, um, yeah, so transpose. Um, is yeah. So as I say, there was two episodes on lead uh, on leading axis theory and transpose, if I remember correctly. Um, but for people in deep learning, they're extremely familiar because we do it all the time. You know, because in if you've got a video of three D reconstructions of um, of multi-channel color data, you've got time, depth, x, y, channel, put them in batches. You've now got a six, a rank six tensor. <laughs> and so when you want to, you know, take the mean across, well, you can take the mean across an axis with an axis argument. But like, if you want to do things flexibly, you use dot per mute in PyTorch to put the Thing in the order you want so that you can then do everything on the trailing axis, whereas on APL everything happens on the leading axis, which is fine. Um, Rory's asking about doing repeated axes. Okay, let's come to that. All right, so transpose. Now, the thing I can't quite remember from the chat is what happens when you transpose higher rank. So let's do that as well. Um, and I know all the different array languages do things a little bit differently. So let's start with our matrix. Sent, I don't know, parrot. Okay. Monadic. Stop pressing the wrong button. 
transpose. Okay. I really wish we had Python magic and APL kernel or a APL magic and a Python kernel, because then we could very easily mix and match, compare, you know, NumPy and whatever. I think um, something I've requested and Rodrigo, I believe, is working on. So that'd be cool. That's pineapple, no? No, it doesn't have magics. Pineapple lets you evaluate a string. It would be actually right. pretty straightforward to turn it into a magic. It'd probably be only like three or four lines of code, I'm guessing. But oh, I think, magic is okay. But as he did say they're trying to. Mm -hmm. I don't think pineapples had a lot of love by the sounds of it. That's the way he he kind of described it. So I think they're trying to make it a bit better. Oh. Okay, this is two by three by four. Um, actually, this is one we probably want to print out. Okay, so it's... Okay, yeah, it's reversed all the axes. So transpose on a higher rank just reverses the axes. Turns it from 234 to 432. So that's what monadic transpose does. And I believe dyadic transpose just lets you say what order you want to permute them in, which I think is I think it's the same as dot permute in PyTorch. Except that you can repeat the axes, which I don't think we can do in PyTorch, as far as I know. I guess we could try it. Never tried it, honestly. Yeah, I'm curious too. Um, okay, so let's, um, annoying warnings. Okay, uh, so we'll create an array of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. M dot per mute. One comma two. Whoops. Oh, oh. <laughs> not an APL anymore. <laughs> Okay, that's transpose. No, okay, so you can't repeat. So there's a difference. Uh, although of course in, um, I guess to do that in uh, PyTorch, we would use einsum. So einsum can do exactly that. Mm. But I do, you know, this is another thing of like, okay, why haven't they made it more general? I guess nobody thought of it. So it'd be, I like it when things are more general rather than less general. So that's something we should definitely look at. Okay. Um, okay. Oh my goodness. All right. Rory's giving us things to try to confuse us. Let's do that. That'll be fun. Um, So we can do, uh, so to flip axes one and two, two, one, three transpose cube. I don't think we have to print it out. Let's just print out its shape. Okay, so that's, that's what you'd expect. Um, and then for the matrix, we can obviously just do a normal transpose. Um, uh, 
Now, what if we do two, two? No. Okay. So what is that really doing when you've got a repeating? The ith element of x gives a new position for the ith axis. Okay, so we need to probably look at some of these details a bit more to learn why that spelt one, one diagonal. Um, Okay, so Rory wants us to try this one, which is <laughs> triple copying. copying. Okay, so one, five, nine. 14, 18, 22. Oh, that's interesting. Question, if we don't understand what it does, do we need it? <laughs> I don't think you can know if you need something until you know what it does. <laughs> no, I know, but the opposite is true also. Oh, I see. Right. So in the nth position, you can the maximum you can have is n minus one. That's why we got the rank error. Does the documentation say what it does? Uh... Oh no, it's not quite that. Oh no, it's more confusing than I thought. All right. So the details of how uh, rank duplicated elements of the left-hand side is something we can definitely experiment with a bit more. Sounds interesting. So probably worth printing this one out because it's a bit confusing. Yeah, I can kind of see how this is this. Yeah, the API explains what it does when there's duplicates. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the manual tells you all that. Um, I'm not going to look at it in too much detail right now, but it sounds fun. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, question mark, I feel like we could deal with in the first notebook, actually. It's pretty fundamental because it's random number generation. And I shouldn't say basic math operators. I'll just say basic math functions because they're not operators. Okay. Roll. Oh, I hadn't noticed the non integer version of roll before. It's interesting.
Okay, so um, it generates a random number between one and n for each n on the right hand side. Mm -hmm. And it looks like zero might be a special case that creates, gives you a float between zero and one. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. Different random number generators are available. Why is that not a link? Come on, people. Oh. Okay. Okay, this is called deal. I know these because I've done them with Claire already. And so that's going to select 13 elements uh, 13 numbers between 1 and 52 without replacement. Hmm. Cool. X random selections from IOTA Y. So something which was fun to play with, and I won't do it now, is if you create a character vector containing ace, two, three, four, et cetera, j, q, k, and then another one containing the Unicode characters for each suit, you can then actually deal cards mm. using this. Hence the name. All right, it seems like a good time to stop. Thanks for joining the bonus session. Yeah, thank well, you for, for us. We're getting close to the end of the glyphs. Thank heavens. It's been <laughs> fun, but I'm. Uh... So after the glyphs, what do you what are you planning to do in terms of APR? Um, do we... I'll probably pause it for a while um because i want to do some nv dev live coding okay. um yeah if people can create some like i think like the best thing would be if folks could add pros to those notebooks after we're done and maybe create some good anki decks and then like i feel like we're yeah you know, i have a community of people that understand all the apl glyphs and could start to build the next level of documentation on top of that or tutorials i should say on top of that um, <clears throat> I'm also interested in BQN. Um, hmm. Something interesting about BQN is that I think it's got a, a you know smaller meter implementation, like because a, a, because APL is a full programming language. Um, Did you say smaller um, what? Because APL is a full programming language, it's 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 big. You know, it's got all this like, which is fine, but it's got all this .NET stuff and control flows stuff, and you know, it's kind of like a standard library of things and a web server and blah blah blah. Um, mm. So BQN is just you know the the, the no, just the the notation and the implementation of that notation. Um, which is the bit I'm more interested in. Mm. So might more be, like regular expression. Might be more suitable for, for this. Um, anyway, it would certainly be interesting to explore, to like see how that feels, see the differences. So anyway, I don't have any particular plans. I never make plans, honestly. <laughs> Thanks again for That's doing all right. this. Thanks all. Bye. Bye.